Hi, my name is Bo Biden, Attorney General of the State of Delaware. I'm here to talk to you about something that's very important to me and to my office, senior abuse. For every one of these types of crimes that's reported to our office, five go unreported. But two million senior Americans are affected every year. And 80 percent, 80 percent of these crimes are committed by family members against their so-called loved ones. We need your help. Seniors need your help. So if you suspect that anyone is affected by any of these crimes, please contact our elder abuse hotline at 1-800-223-9074. Come on, man! Oh, we're having a little fun with you this morning. I'm Dave Rubin, this is The Rubin Report. It's February 23rd, 2023. I like the symmetry there. We're live streaming on Rumble. YouTube and locals, share, subscribe, tap that notification bell if you have not. And quick reminder that tomorrow, Friday, we'll be live streaming at a special time. I don't know exactly what time it is yet, but we are cutting the blue ribbon, officially opening the offices and studios uh, for Rumble in Sarasota, Florida. That's right. And I'm gonna do the first ever live stream from there. I think it's gonna be around 9 or 9.30 a.m., Eastern, stay tuned on that. We're only gonna be live streaming that on Rumble and on Locals, not on YouTube. So subscribe if you have not. And uh, yes, that cold open was a little gratuitous, a little gratuitous elderly abuse with Joe Biden, but we felt it was necessary because yesterday, uh, Joe Biden leaving Ukraine, well, he tripped up the stairs again. It's interesting that he's always tripping up the stairs. You know what I mean? Most people fall down the stairs. Gravity would dictate that you'd usually fall down, uh, but he falls up. Now there's obviously something a little wrong with his gait, the way he walks. I mean, something because of whatever's going on is not quite right. This keeps happening. Okay, I don't even mean to make a big deal about that. Actually, we're showing you that because I'm mostly gonna be talking about Justin Trudeau today and then we're getting to a locals community Q and A. Uh, but Justin Trudeau fell the other day too. And this one was just sort of hilarious. <laughs> I feel like we should have looped that like 20. Ah, I'm just in Trudeau, I fell on that. <laughs> I love you, Gavin Newsom. Anyway, <laughs> I really wanted to talk about Justin Trudeau's policies today, not just wa uh, watch him tripping through a, uh, a parking lot over there. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Justin Trudeau and his feelings about uh, immigration in Canada, and then a bunch more. Let me talk to you guys about Birch Gold first, and then we will go from there. Uh, you know, despite the U.S. blowing through $31.4 trillion debt ceiling in January, the leftist White House still refuses to reduce spending. While our national leadership has buried its head in the sand when it comes to fiscal responsibility, it's time to pull yours out. Now would be a great time to diversify into gold with Birch Gold. In times of high uncertainty and instability, gold is king, it's dependable. Birch Gold makes it easy to convert an IRA or 401k into an IRA in precious metals. Here's what you need to do. Visit birchgold.com slash Dave to claim your free info kit on gold and then talk to one of their precious metals specialists. Think about it. To dig our country out of this mountain of debt, every single taxpayer in America would have to write a check for about 250 grand and it's only getting worse. Protect yourself with gold today. Visit birchgold.com slash Dave. They've got an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, thousands of happy customers, countless five-star reviews, and you can go to birchgold.com slash Dave today and get some gold. All right, let's talk about Justin Trudeau. He gave this big speech the other day, kind of like a town hall thing, and just everything the guy says. As I often say about Justin Trudeau, which is uh, loosely quoted from my friend Jordan Peterson, he simply cannot say anything true. Even when he says something that's like pretty close to the truth, it's couched in a lot of madness. Uh, but here he is uh, explaining to Canadians why they need mass immigration now more than ever. There are a lot of pressures on our system. Um, increasing the immigration levels, interestingly, will take some of the pressure off of the system uh, because the stream on bringing in permanent residents uh, is has got room to bring in more, and it's when people come as refugees and try to flip or get refugee crisis that it, uh, status that it 
sort of slows down the system a little bit. So increasing the levels will actually help bring in more people to respond to that. It's also that he just says nothing. The Canadian system is not any under any pressure that they need more people in Canada. Now, can Canada bring in more people? Geographically, certainly they can. I mean, Canada is an absolutely massive, largely empty country. There's not a lot of, can I get the number on Canadians? How many Canadians are there? I'm gonna guess it's probably about 30 million, something like that, yeah? And they are, they are geographically absolutely huge. You don't need to look at a map to know that. Like, everyone should know that. So they've got room for people. It's not about room, although a lot of people don't wanna live in an icy tundra, but is what it is. Um, although plenty of, uh, you would think, migrants that are fleeing other places would love to be there, but for some reason they don't go to Canada, they all come here, okay, fine. Um, this idea that the system needs these people is crazy, but Justin Trudeau is not really the Prime Minister of Canada. I mean, I get it, that's what it says on his desk, but he really is an agent of the World Economic Forum. He wants to flood Canada with migrants, with illegal immigrants. Canada has a policy of immigration. It's not as open as the United States. The United States, you know, we take your poor, your huddled masses, we take your fentanyl dealers, we'll take anybody basically. And you can just walk in and we'll give you a free phone. They are not a nation of immigrants in that sense. Uh, but the idea that they need them, it's like, just be honest about it, man. Say, hey, you wanna have more people here because actually what you think is the more, you bring in more people, you get them locked into your social services, you think they'll vote for you and the liberals forever and you'll never have to give up power. Just say it, dude. You don't have to pretend that for some reason the Canadian system, which by the way, if the Canadian system is shaking in any way, it's because of you. It's because of your lockdowns. It's because of your attacks on free speech. It's because of everything you've done to the economy and all that other stuff. So he need only look in a mirror. But he continued uh, to say that Canada doesn't have an immigrant problem because you know, they've got us right beneath them and you know, we're taking the brunt of the storm. People have confidence that we have an immigration system that works, that there are rules to follow, that people come here and uh, you know, come because they're qualified. And because we have two big oceans, well, three big oceans on, on all three sides of us and a very attractive and warmer country immediately to our south, we haven't in our history over the past many decades had a lot of irregular migration, which causes people in the States and in Europe to be a little more worried about uh, immigrants coming. So this is interesting stuff. First off, he's saying that they have rules and it works. That sounds an awful like Donald Trump type right wing stuff that you should have rules related to immigration. You should have a system that works. Uh, but what's the other issue? Well, they've got the United States acting as the freaking buffer, which is incredibly interesting because, you know, we get all of these people coming through our Mexican border, literally about 2.5 million border crossings in the last year, more than ever, coming in, bringing fentanyl, crime, all of the stuff. And even if they're nice people, and even if they have legitimate reasons to flee their countries, you still have to come in legally. Once you cross that border, you are now breaking the laws of the United States. I know we don't treat you like that, but that's how it is. It's just how it is and how it has to be if we're to believe that a nation state would, to, would be something that's worth having and something worth continuing. Um, so it's interesting that he sort of likes a more Republican, uh, policy when it comes to the border. Um, but at the same time, he's telling you he wants to let in as many people as possible. Now, it's very easy for him because in essence, what he's saying is we protect the border, right? Like we protect the border. It's not as if he has thousands and thousands of Americans trying to get into the Southern Canadian border, right? Uh, the problem is that at our Southern border, we don't have a border and all these people are wandering their asses in to the country. Uh, Greg Abbott, the governor of Texas, he's basically had it with Biden and Texas is gonna build its own wall. On top of all that, Texas is the only state in the history of the United States of America that it has ever built its own border wall. We have been in the process over the past year of acquiring rights on land owned by private landowners uh, that will allow us to accelerate the process of building the border wall over this coming year. There's a possibility uh, depending upon how the construction process works, where by the end of this calendar year, Texas as a state may have added more border wall uh, than the Trump administration did uh, for the United States of America during his uh, four years in office. 
you really need to understand, this, this is extraordinary stuff. The states are not supposed to wor worry about the national borders. They can always pay a little more attention, right? If you're a border state, you gotta pay a little more attention, say if you're Texas, uh, than if you're just somewhere in the middle of the country, right? Like that's just obvious because it's your land right there. But it's not their job. It is one of the few duties of the federal government to make sure that our borders as a nation are protected because Biden and this administration and Mayorkas and the rest of these people are, are completely not doing their job. They're either dropping the ball or this is intentional. I, I, at this point, believe it is intentional. They want as many people here, as many people on the dole, as many people voting illegally. Like, I'm on board all that stuff. That, that is just my personal opinion. Come get me for it. Um, but because this is happening, uh, Texas is now saying enough is enough and we are going to build a wall. We are going to pay private citizens so we can put a wall on private property or they're gonna use eminent domain. There's all sorts of legal issues around all of this stuff. Uh, but the point here is, is, is something that I've been trying to push for the last few months, which is that the Republicans are not only getting balls, they are showing teeth, teeth and balls. That's, oof. The point is, guys, uh, there is a new attitude amongst conservatives at this point, which is we will not be messed with relentlessly. You cannot destroy the known universe and, and watch us just sit back and take it. And that's a perfect segue to one other thing that I wanted to do before we get to the uh, Q&A, because you may remember over the last week or so, I've, I've talked about this Andrea Mitchell interview a couple times. Uh, where Andrea Mitchell from NBC News and MSNBC, she's been working there for a couple decades. She is thought of as a reputable journalist. She sat down with Vice President Kamala Harris and she said basically that Ron DeSantis wants to ban teaching of slavery and the aftermath of slavery in Florida. It is a complete 100% lie with no daylight, no equivocation, it is a lie. He took an one AP African-American studies course, as you know, out of the curriculum because they were also going to teach gender queer theory in that class. So it was gonna teach critical race theory in essence. They were gonna push for reparations. It was gonna be an activist course, not an educational course. So he took one thing out. Andrea Mitchell, she knows, she either knows that or she's a complete idiot. I don't think she's a complete idiot, so that means that she is paid by NBC to lie. And her producers set up a show to run cover for Democrats and lie about Republicans. Anyway, NBC has subsequently been repeatedly trying to get Ron DeSantis to come on their shows. They'd love to get Ron DeSantis on Meet the Press or whatever MSNBC clown shows there are. And uh, Brian Griffin, who is the press secretary for Ron DeSantis, had an absolutely spectacular response to them yesterday. He said, to all of the bookers and producers reaching out to our office from NBC and MSNBC for Governor Ron DeSantis to join your shows, this will be the standard response from our office until Andrea Mitchell apologizes and your track record improves. Uh, here's the actual response that he sent to NBC. He said, I think we need to take a step back. There will be no consideration of anything related to NBC Universal or its affiliates until and at least Andrea Mitchell corrects the blatant lie she made about the governor, Governor DeSantis, says that slavery and the aftermath of slavery should not be taught to Florida school children. This is false and NBC and its affiliates display a consistent track record of truthful reporting. Please feel free to pass this up and around the network. Sincerely, Brian Griffin. Now, this is brilliant at two levels. Now, first, actually, I'll, before I explain why, uh, here, just in case you don't remember the original Andrea Mitchell clip, this is a little YouTube short that we made about it. Does Governor Ron DeSantis not know a black, about black history and the black experience when he says that slavery and the aftermath of slavery should not be taught to Florida school children? It should not be some politician saying what should be taught in our classrooms. If you believed any of that, Kamala, you would be for school choice, right? It shouldn't be politicians who tell kids what to do, except you and the Democrats are the ones that want all of the kids going to public schools so that they can be brainwashed by your teachers' unions and everything else. Andrea Mitchell, what an insane, what an insane way of framing this. What does Ron DeSantis not know about the black experience? Something to that effect. What a crazy way. Why does he not want slavery and the aftermath of slavery to be taught? It is a complete lie. The segment producer, you have to be fired. 
Somebody has to be fired. But Andrea Mitchell should be shamed everywhere she goes because again, either she's an idiot, so she's asking questions of which she knows nothing about, or she is paid. They are literally paying them to lie so that Kamala Harris, who's a moron, can lie in her response. You think I'm clear about my feelings on these things? It's getting very clear, wouldn't you say? Uh, Andrea Mitchell, that, that really is the issue, but the, she's either a liar, she, well, she's either an idiot. Like, let's just, like the best, the most generous version is she's just an idiot and she has no idea what she's doing after decades of doing this and all her producers are idiots. That's like the generous, like, you're not intentionally doing this version. And, and clearly that's not the, the real version of it, right? The real version is they are paid to lie. They want to make Democrats look as good as possible and they wanna lie about DeSantis. She knows, of course, that slavery and the aftermath of slavery have been and will continue to be taught here in Florida. That is one specific course that he went after. But the response really is what I wanted to talk about because the response is brilliant on two fronts. Uh, well, there's three fronts I would say. First is just the fight back, just fight back. Okay, that's great. The second front is now you've exposed it, you've exposed it. So Andrea Mitchell can either, uh, she can either say, boy, I really screwed that one up or they ignore, in which case either way, you know what the answer is, she's guilty, right? And then on the other front, uh, number three on this one would be that the rest of the media should report on this, right? Every day, I show you freaking DeSantis clips every day. This guy is all over uh, every news channel all the time, usually lying about him. Now, NBC wants him on air. He is officially, his campaign is officially saying, we will not work with NBC News. That's news in and of itself. So you would think that ABC, CBS, CNN, New York Times, Washington Post, you'd think they would write a story. Governor Ron DeSantis refuses to uh, be interviewed by or do any work with NBC News, but they won't write that story even though it, could, it would hurt their competition. You know why? Because they're all in on it together. So it's a brilliant move by Brian Griffin. You're exposing Andrea Mitchell to be an absolute fraud. And at the same time, you're, you're exposing the rest of the media as people that are in cahoots with the fraud themselves. Okay, let's get to a Ruben report dot locals dot com community Q and A free us now twenty twenty says what do you think about the Roseanne Barr comeback on Fox and will you interview her so if I'm not mistaken Roseanne Barr has a new comedy special that they're releasing on Fox Nation is that right so they're releasing it on Fox Nation I saw one little clip it was kind of funny it was very very anti woke uh, complaining about uh, I think about her daughter or something um, you know Roseanne and I used to be pretty good friends over the years we've sort of lost touch these last few years since I've I've left Los Angeles. Uh, but she was a, a brilliant comic back in the day. The original Roseanne show was absolutely phenomenal. Her cancellation, you know, they brought the Roseanne show back. It's number one. It was the number one comedy in America. What, like three, four years ago, something like that? She makes one silly joke on Twitter. Um, who, the, who was the joke about? It was about... Um, no, it wasn't the Ghostbusters chick. No, 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 it was somebody that worked for the Obama administration. Valerie Jarrett. It was about Valerie Jarrett, uh, and she said something about her being a monkey or looks like a monkey or something. Roseanne, I fully believe her on this. She didn't know she was black. She was certainly not making a racial joke. The whole point of the Roseanne show, they were fighting for working class Americans. They had gay characters on before it was cool to do that. They had some interracial people on television, on the program, for some of the friends that they worked with at the factory or whatever. And she's just been on like the front lines of fighting for the right things over the years. It's just so profoundly stupid. So they canceled the show. Then the show, of course, uh, no, no. Well, they canceled the show first. They fire her. Then they bring the show back. It's not called Roseanne anymore. Now it's called The Connors. They kill Roseanne. And then of course that show tanks and that's off the air too. So they all get what they want. I, I hope she, you know, look, more voices, the better. She's a little nutty, but let, let's get her out there. And yes, I'd be happy to interview her again. Uh, Giselle says, what's your take on the Project Veritas O'Keefe kerfluffle, love that word, and the timing of it seems suspicious. No, have you ever interviewed James O'Keefe? I did interview James O'Keefe probably about four years ago. You can go check that out. Uh, he came into studio, we did that. Uh, I think we aired that one live actually, if I'm not mistaken. Um, look, Project Veritas, have they done some slightly shady things over the years related to how they get information? It sounds like they probably have. But putting that aside, relative to what all of the mainstream media does with everything, might I point you to MSNBC and Andrea Mitchell and NBC News and all that, 
um, it's not a big deal. The only reason Project Veritas always has this light shined on it is because they're, they're getting the other guys, right? They're getting the liberals, they're getting the Democrats, they're getting the Fauci's, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what they exposed over the last couple of weeks with that, with that video that we played a bit of where this, uh, this young guy who's an executive at Pfizer basically admits they're doing, they're doing gain of function and it's to put out more vaccines and everything. Well, then two weeks later, suddenly James O'Keefe is kicked off the company that he founded. It sounded like the board was going to keep him. Then the board got rid of him. All of that being said, I don't, it seems to me there's something else going on there. And I just don't know what it is. They're saying they're kicking him off because he had uh, spent a lot of money on like Uber blacks and some plane rides and things like that. And that I guess he had been abusive to some employees, but the timing seems weird. And if it was just about expenses for the most part, okay, so he was rude to some employees, so be it. Um, but if it was mostly about expenses, those are things that can be reimbursed. So it feels like something else is there. I just don't know what it is. Uh, Wayne says, when is your next visit to Texas? We don't have any Texas uh, stuff on the books, do we? Not that I know of at the moment. Uh, I would love to get back to Texas. I like Texas. I, I really like Dallas. You know, that's where the Blaze guys are. Uh, we're not working with the Blaze the way we were before, but we're still distributing the show over there. Uh, and I, I'm sure I could shoot a show or two over there and go hang out with Glenn on the ranch or whatever it might be. Uh, so we will try to uh, to make something happen. I'd like to go to Austin just to see what's going on with the urban decay over there. I've seen uh, a bunch of videos and it's it's on its way to San Francisco and LA. So I don't know that I really want to see it, but I guess I, would, I got a friend in Austin. So, you know, maybe. Uh, Benjamin says, any chance we can get a behind the scenes episode or you accidentally leave the camera on during lunch after the show, it would be fun to see what really goes on in the studio. Well, interestingly, usually now because of the kids, I go and eat downstairs uh, so that I can help David with the kids. Connor and Phoenix usually eat in here. So if we were to leave the cameras on, I assume it would be you guys bad-mouthing me, you know? That Ruben, man, he blew it today. It would, be, it would be a lot of that. Um, we've been thinking about some more behind the scenes things. You know, we're doing the post game show obviously for locals now, but we've been thinking about some things out of the studio. I'm feeling a little constricted always in this little box and we're, we've got some ideas for a live studio thing. So we're, we're putting some things together, stay tuned. Supsi says, uh, what is your opinion about our food supply and the many conspiracy theories that are floating about I don't know what to believe. Oh, I mean, this is one where you see these factories blowing up. We've seen all these fires at these food processing plants. You know, there's what happened in East Palestine. Like just these explosions and toxic chemicals and fish dying and all these weird things. And it's like, is it a little bit of confirmation bias and that we're seeing these things more because of Twitter and online video and phones, maybe. Uh, but does it also feel like something really weird is going on? At the same time, you've got the World Economic Forum, people telling us we're gonna eat bugs while they you know, eat their uh, A5 Wagyu. It, it all feels very weird. I would say the best thing that you can do is something we're trying to do here, which is grow a little food at home if you can, uh, you know, plant a little garden, grow some tomatoes or some lettuce. Uh, you could consider the chicken coop. I would love to get a chicken coop again. We, don't, we had one in LA for a while, don't have one now. Um, but like having some, we have, a, we have an avocado uh, tree here, a really mature avocado tree, which is awesome. And we have a mango tree, like having some stuff um, so that if the shit hits the fan, like you're able to survive like an extra day or two, although then everyone's like, hey, that not that the guy with the avocado tree? And then <laughs> you just get taken out another way. The point is I watch a lot of zombie movies and uh, you know, just get a can of beans and pray. Uh, Vinay says, uh, peaceful divorce has been suggested once again, uh, this time by Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. Do you think there's more validity for it now? Look, I've, I've mentioned it a couple of times. I, I don't like talking about it because, you know, sometimes you could almost talk something into existence, right? So the more that a, a whole bunch of us talk about this national divorce, that the red and blue are just going their separate ways. Why should Florida and the citizens of Florida have to pay the debts of California, which is so mismanaged when we're doing it right here. You know, that would be one example of it. What, at some point, what makes us the United States if there are places that are fully indoctrinating their kids versus other states that are, that are teaching them an honest assessment of history? Like, what is uniting us at this point? We're so disconnected. I mean, I feel this, I really feel this. Like, my life as a Floridian and my day-to-day -day operation and my family and my community here and my coworkers and all that, it's so strong and, and Th uh, thriving and flourishing here. And that's in just complete 
contrast to what's going on at the federal level. All of the stuff that I talk about on this show when it comes to the president and foreign policy and monetary policy and all of the stuff. So like what is making us united at this point? I don't know exactly. Look, the problem, the inherent problem, no matter what. So we start a separatist movement right from the prequels, right? And we're like, we just don't wanna be part of this bureaucratic nonsense. You guys are destroying the dollar. The, the you know, just everything is, is out of whack because you guys, because half the country doesn't know how to govern themselves or is just doing it the wrong way. The problem is the blue states will never stop. Like it, really, if you took, if it's 10 years from now and everything keeps separating, the red states just keep you know, functioning as capitalist states and care about freedom and care about our founding, doc, founding documents and the blue states just keep going the other way and it's big government and taking your guns and your sons or daughters and all of that stuff. Well, we can do that for a while, but at some point, the blue states will want what the red states have because there will be, they will have all of the production, all of the good people who produce things and innovation and literally art and music and everything else because freedom is fertile ground for all the good stuff that humanity is all about, right? And they will never stop. They will, when California ro you know, just goes off the cliff into debt, it will want the surplus that Florida has and the federal government will somehow try to facilitate that. So I don't know what we do, but again, you talk about this and then you sort of talk it into existence and it's like, I, don't, I certainly don't want a civil war. We, we gotta figure this thing out. I, I don't know what the answer on that one is. Uh, Florida Man Chuck says, what is something about Florida that is better than you expected? I, I, I expected it to be great, it has been great. Um, the little bit that I've been out and about for the food scene has been good, but like right now with the kids, we're not getting out much and I'm just doing a lot of cooking. Look, the secret of Florida, I, I should probably whisper this Joe Biden style. The secret of Florida is that the summers aren't that bad, at least down here in Southeast Florida, Miami. You know, it's hot. You don't wanna be out. It's 95, let's say three o'clock, the sun beating down in the middle of the day and it's humid, the hair's a little lower. There are uh, these things that you can put in your window at your house or your condo, uh, and they literally, they are electronic devices that you connect to the power and they will condition the air. They are known as air conditioners. And, and you get one of these things and, and you'll make it through the summer. And it's pretty sweet. You might even go, my God, the air's on too much. It's a little too chilly in here, that could happen. It's just been great here, it's just been great. I, I have literally no complaints. I, I just love it. Uh, Richard says, since Vivek announced his bid for president, that makes three declared Republicans so far. Sununu sounded like he was gonna get in the race on Brett Baer the other night. What do you think of the number of candidates in the field that'll be the Republicans when the primary start? I put the number at nine. Well, okay, so let's say you got Trump, you got Nikki, you got Vivek. I think Pompeo's gonna get in. Let's say Sununu gets in. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Let's come up with a couple others. Let's say maybe Tim Scott. I'm not hearing any real chatter on that, but I feel like it, I feel like it is a possibility. Who else, who else might get in on the Republican side? Who else do you think? I feel like there's gotta be like a couple more. You're saying nine. Oh, well, it's, yeah, I mean, I guess we have to go through the Larry Hogan. <laughs> he could count as two. Uh, you know, is Cruz, I, I don't sense Tim, Ted Cruz is gonna get in. John Bolton has said he wants to get in a couple of times. No one's gonna vote for him, but okay. Um, you know, there's a Josh Hawley or, a t or a Tom Cotton. I don't, I don't sense they are. So what do I have here? I have Trump, Nikki, Vivek, Pompeo, Sununu, Tim Scott, Larry Hogan, John Bolton. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, there's this Ron DeSantis guy. Have you heard about him? I guess I should add him. That would put us at nine. So your nine sounds pretty solid to me, actually. There'll also be like two surprises. You know, there's always two like really out there ones that get on the debate stage once everyone laughs and then they go home. So we shall see. Uh, Graham says, Dave, brand new subscriber, but I've been watching your show for some time. Welcome aboard. Uh, one question I have, uh, do you do your entire show with a black Sharpie felt? Oh, how do you do your entire show with a black Sharpie felt marker in your hand? How do you keep from getting ink on your fingers? Is that a superpower that you possess? Uh, you know, the hands are actually pretty clean right now. Something has happened in the last few months where I'm always holding the pen. I'm Bob Dole, Bob Dole holds a pen, gotta hold a pen. Um, I don't know, I think it might have a little something to do with, I've been, I've been telling you guys, I'm watching a lot of uh, old Johnny Carson stuff. Sometimes he would be fiddling with a pen, like doing a little of this kind of stuff. I, 
I don't know, maybe it's like, it almost like distracts my brain in a little bit in some ways so that when I'm talking to you, I'm like totally focused on that in a way. So it's like, it takes out a certain part of, uh, of the thought process or something. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I maintain, uh, I maintain a pretty decent uh, hand situation. Oh wait, no, no, I'm good. Uh, Mickey says, what's your favorite thing about being a dad? Is it the freedom to say dad jokes without impunity? I mean, I've been doing dad jokes way before I was a dad. Uh, but so far the favorite thing, I mean, like these kids, when they smile at you, it's like, man, there's nothing better. Like, and, and just like, that's it, that's it. If I can get the two of them now, especially because Justin now six months, like he's laughing now, like full on laughing. And he came out of the womb smiling. Like this kid is a freaking smile machine. Luke was definitely like a little slower to warm up. He's the thinker, it's very clear. Justin, he's gonna win him on charm. Luke is the thinker. But now he's smiling a lot too. And if I can get the two of them in the morning, that's where I'm, I'm, I'm really at my best with them and they're at, my, they're at their best with me in the morning. So usually about like seven to nine, something like that. That's when I can really like focus in on them, like completely distraction free. And like when I have the two of them laying there and I'm just like doing silly things, I'm like on the stomach and all that stuff. And they're just like laughing hysterically and like, yeah, it's just, it's just great. Uh, Michaela says, hey Dave, I'm following your work for about two months and I like your common sense. We need to come back to sanity, I agree. Uh, question, how can we support each other even more? There should be a kind of circle. I'm reaching out from Europe, Austria to be precise. There's a lot going on here too. People waking up, taking a stand. Well, that's, that's absolutely fantastic to hear. I don't know that we've ever focused on Austria on this show in any way whatsoever. Um, look, this, the thing, the beauty of doing these online shows is that you are reaching people all over the world, right? I mean, I think probably, I don't know that I've, I could think of one, maybe North Korea might be the only country that I could think of off the top of my head that, that we've never gotten fan mail from. But I have had Yanmi Park there and she's a North Korean uh, refugee, so that, that counts as something. Um, but the beauty of like this, this mass political awakening that's happening in the United States and it's happening all over the world because whether we like it or not, we are all connected. Maybe we should be doing some kind of like monthly like world recap or something. I will talk to the team and welcome aboard and appreciate your support. Uh, Tom says, uh, Dave, let's put together a locals community member cruise. Your events are always so good. It would be an amazing combo thoughts. I would love to do that. You know, we have a little bit of international trip coming up at the beginning of May, which I'll fill you guys in on shortly. We are trying to pull off, do we have a rough idea for it? Like a middle of March DC trip? I don't want to say the date exactly yet. Okay, it sounds like late March, we are going to do a locals DC trip. It will be only for locals community members. We'll do like a day in DC. We'll all wander around together. I think uh, Kevin McCarthy is gonna come give a talk. We'll do like a little, uh, little coffee situation with him. Maybe we can get up to his office, take an insider tour. We're trying to figure out more stuff like that. You know, the thing is obviously with, with young kids here, my ability to just bounce around all over the place is, is a little bit tight, at least in this first year. Uh, but a cruise, I, I really like cruises. You know, cruises are very controversial. People either love the cruise or they hate the cruise. There's nobody that has like mixed feelings about the cruise, right? Um, I really enjoy the cruise. Like I, I've also, uh, I enjoy casinos. Like I just like, I like a lot of that kind of like crazy stimulation in a way. Um, so I would do, I would do a cruise situation, but again, it, you gotta bear with me on the timing of some of this. Uh, Snow Baby says, there was a rumor Nancy Pelosi bought a mansion in Florida. What if you woke up one day and found out that she was your neighbor? Man, so as far as I know, that, that rumor fell through. It sounded like she was going to buy like a 20 or $25 million house, of course, on the water, I think in Jupiter, Florida, and I guess it didn't happen. I can tell you this now, I've never said this on camera before, but I was actually working on a sitcom pilot with Kirstie Alley. Um, about basically she was gonna sort of play a Nancy Pelosi type moving to Florida, like a California progressive moving to Florida and then living next door to a Trump type. And we had started the beginning of the writing process and then she got sick very, very quickly out of nowhere. Um, or as far as I knew, it was out of nowhere and she's no longer with us, unfortunately, but maybe we could pick up the idea. The, the idea for the sitcom was kinda, kinda fun. Um, but uh, yeah, as far as I know, Nancy Pelosi does not live in Florida, thank God. 
Uh, Ashley says, what's your opinion on interreligious marriages? My husband is Jewish and I'm Catholic. Well, I think as long, well, first off, as long as you're in love, that's the most important thing. If you love each other and you see the world in a somewhat similar way and you wanna build something together that will last possibly with kids and, and that, that is um, eternal in a way, uh, I think that's number one. But I think on the second part of that, I mean, I have many friends that are intermarried one way or another, or this religion, that religion, or, or, or atheists and religious, or all sorts of stuff. Not many of those anymore, actually. Um, but I think as long as you can um, respect each other's traditions and beliefs, and you know, as long as it doesn't drive a wedge between you, you know what I mean? Like if you're, if I would say, if you're the Catholic, let's say, and you're constantly demanding that the, the Jewish person accept Christ or the Jewish person is con constantly uh, you know, demanding that the Catholic person not accept Christ or something like that, like then you got a problem. You got like an existential problem with your marriage and that's not gonna work. But if you're raising a family and you can bring them up with, with two traditions and explain this is what my family and my ancestors believed, this is what my family and my ancestors believe. These are the foods we eat, the, cel the holidays we celebrate, how and why we do all these things. Um, that, that seems pretty solid to me. It, it creates all sorts of complexities though, because there are things related to marriages and what religions are the child and are you confusing them to certain degree? So it's not, it's not easy for sure. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that, um, but I think there are definitely ways to do it right. Uh, Kathy says, hey Dave, you're the best and thanks for all the laughs. I see climate emergency masking lurking in the background. What is What say you? Yeah, it's coming. If you don't think it's coming, I'm sorry, but I've got a mask to sell you. It's coming. They will lock people down again in blue states and it will partly, I don't know if they're gonna do it next because of they're just gonna release a new COVID or tell you that a new COVID is out there or it will be because of monkeypox or it will literally because be because of climate change. My guess is it's going to be climate change. That seems to be the direction that they're pushing all of this in. And they will say, you know, it has finally happened. Here in Los Angeles, the smog is not lifting right now. It is not safe to breathe the air. Uh, you should wear masks. And actually it's best if you don't leave your house at all, we will send drones from Whole Foods to your house and keep your windows closed and make sure you're watching state-sponsored television. You gotta keep watching NBC to know what's going on and they will just try to scare the hell out of you. And that sort of does harken back to that, that question about you know the states uh, separating and all of those things. Because I think one thing is clear for sure, regardless of who's president during the next, uh, the next pandemic or the next lockdown or whatever you wanna call it, there is going to be way more people and way more states that will not fall in line. And thank God for that. Thank God I live in one of those states and we welcome all of you guys. Uh, anyway, more on that DC trip coming up, more on the international trip coming up. Uh, there is no post game show today because I actually pre-taped this because I'm in Sarasota right now. Because as I mentioned, tomorrow, Friday, is the grand opening of the Rumble studio and offices. I will be live streaming from there sometime early in the morning, rumble.com slash Ruben Report, or it'll be up on locals, rubenreport.locals.com. I thank you very much. I will see you, not, well, I'll see you tomorrow, just doing the Rumble thing. It'll be a little different than here, but it's me and you know, we'll have fun. Okay, see ya. I have seen fire. Not a joke. Think about it. Think about what you'd think about Seen at the time. Sunny days I thought would never end. All right. We're here for Daryl and his band. That's an applause line. <laughs> <laughs>